So essentially, what is the Wellform document workflow? So it's an XML publishing platform. Uh, we're aiming to produce publications with the entire process in mind. So we're looking at the editor and the composer setting things up so that things are correct for the typesetter, the typesetter working in a certain methodology that then makes it okay to export right out to an electronic version. And the structure that we define at the very beginning, like Elvis mentioned in composition, that gets carried throughout the entire thing. Um, in some other workflows that we've seen or projects from different clients, everyone's kind of working in their own little camp. You know, editors work this way and they send the manuscript over to the typesetter and the typesetter maybe does whatever they do and then it gets extracted or exported to EPUB from InDesign. Um, a lot of extra work can be done in that way. A lot of things can get lost in the shuffle. And um, in many other cases, let's say you wanted to go back to Word at any point in that process, it could be a bit of an arduous task to go from one format to another. So the way that we're setting things up is designed to be extremely flexible, um, to use current technologies so that there's not some weird third-party program you're using. Um, everyone's gonna be able to use the technologies they're comfortable with already, like Word and InDesign, but um, be able to sort of take advantages of this workflow and these technologies. So it's really a publishing theory where it's not like a set of discrete portions. Each task is connected to the entire thing. Um, one of the tools we use to do that is a consistent language, um, what we would refer to as the SDML list or our body of styles. So these um, styles are going to be uh, used in addition to the tools to move structured content from one form to another. Um, even if project didn't start out in the Wellform document workflow as well, because they use common technologies like Word. I'm going to start talking about just some common terminology that we're gonna use while we're talking about um, our workflow. Um, Elvis already touched upon this briefly, composition. I'm gonna be talking about the composition of something a lot. And that doesn't mean necessarily the editorial aspect, doesn't mean the, um, it doesn't mean the typesetting. It means what style has something um, been attributed? How are we identifying this element in the document? Um, we'll talk about um, composing or, oh, well, how would you compose this? That would mean well, I have this group of text, how would I style it in such a way that it's going to be structurally sound moving from one stage to another? Um, structure versus rendering. This is gonna come up a lot um, as a big concept and it's gonna come up a lot as we're talking about maybe applying corrections. What we say when we talk about structure versus rendering, it means how are you defining an element versus how is that element expressed visually? Um, when we look at something like HTML code, that's what we would think of as um, a brief explanation of a, of a structure. Uh, there's no, there's opening and closing brackets, um, but it's not necessarily visually oriented differently. Your H1 doesn't look different than your P in the code. It then gets expressed visually through CSS and HTML, and that's when we start adding those things that help humans to understand the styles. So your H1 is bigger and it's bold, or your block quote is indented, or your list has different indents. Um, but we need to understand while we're working this, that there always has to be this underlay, underlying structural identifier to all the things that we're looking at. If you are, in a real quick example, um, we have a character style. We're gonna get a look at that in composition um, to identify italic text, just like you have I tags. And yes, Karen, that's a very good point. There is a glossary. Um, so if anyone wants to look up a term or if I'm using something or later on you can't remember what it is, we did uh, write up a glossary with all of our different terms so you can take a look at that. Um, to get back to that example real quick, you have italic text. In that HTML example, it would be bracketed with I tags. And so it you know, shows up uh, in the correct italics or emphasis. Um, in Word, there's a similar style that we would use for that. And it's that I tag that's going to make sure that it's italic in the textbook and italic in the ebook. If you are editing the book and you just click like italics in Word, well now it looks italic, so it's rendered as italic, but there's no structural backing. So once it goes out of Word, that is gone and it doesn't become italics there. So when we're thinking about altering things or defining things or changing something, we always need to do it with 
a structural change, not just a rendering change. Another brief example, your typesetter finds that you've styled a head incorrectly. It's supposed to be an A head, big and bold, and maybe it just looks like a regular piece of text because the wrong style was applied to it in composition. If your typesetter says, well, I'll just change the fonts and make it look big and make it look correct, but it's still styled structurally the same way as normal text, then that is also just gone. So when we talk about structure versus rendering, we just want to make sure to have that underlying um, you know, tag or style applied to those texts. Um, Elvis, anything before I move on? No, I just, uh, just wanted to, to just reiterate what, um, what Tim was saying, that when whenever you have something in a, a certain program, be it InDesign or, or Word or anything like that, how something looks doesn't necessarily mean that it is styled correctly and that that information is going to be um, preserved when you move from one format to another. And that's why we sort of put this emphasis on structure. And when we talk about composition, um, we sort of use that to sort of in a sense, like, and to use the term crudely, like drill it into you. So that way you can see it as, start seeing things not only as they look um, or how they're rendered, but actually as what they should be. Uh, so for example, to use the example Tim used, like, you know, uh, a head should be composed or structured as an A head if you want it to be preserved as an A head throughout your entire uh, workflow. And so, so yeah, so I'll hand it back over to Tim. Okay. Um, so let's see, the other things we're going to talk about, another term will be articulation. When we talk about articulating something, that refers specifically to spacing distinctions. If you think about um, how space should be handled, let's say you have a, a block quote between a piece of text, typically you want that to be set off with something. Um, or if you have a block quote before regular text, you want space after that. So we'll be talking about articulation when we get into composition, because there'll be steps that you take to sort of automatically say like, well, this is the first instance of this element. This is the last instance of this element, um, similar to how you would have like division tags in an HTML file. Um, we're going to talk about what we refer to as a SAM file. So in addition to working with Word files and InDesign files and PDFs, there's going to be some scribe specific file types that we're going to see. One of those is called SAM. It's essentially like a brief HTML style type markup, opening and closing tags, plain text. Um, we're going to use that in a lot of different stages. Um, SAM comes up a lot when we're looking at doing QC checks in our, in our work. You're working in Word, then you do like a test conversion to run certain searches for things. Uh, sometimes having it in this standard uh, file, if we, um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't point that out. Yeah, Sam, scribe abbreviated markup. Um, so we kind of run and do like a test conversion in these Sam files. They're very simple, um, just opening and closing tags. And then we'll refer to an SCML file, which stands for a scribe markup language. So like you would have XML or HTML, um, we have SCML. It's very similar to a SAM file, it uses the same format. It's again an XML file with opening and closing tags, but it's uh, this more robust archivable version of the file. So it introduces things like metadata, identifying chapters with IDs or types of files with IDs. Uh, this is where we get linking as well. So if you're going to, let's say, um, you know, type that to an ebook and you have these things that say like, as we see on page three, well, that's where you, in the SDML file, you start to introduce those links that go to page three in the electronic versions, be it HTML or ebook. Um, and my last point before I just give you another brief overview are gonna be um, to go over different tools that we're gonna use. So uh, the tools that we use in the workflow is the SDML list that's gonna be basically our style Bible for all of these things. At every point when you're um, working with our online converter, the, what we call the digital hub, it's going to check all the styles in your manuscript and take a look for, does this match up? If something doesn't match up to that SDML list, it'll alert your attention to it because we wanna make sure that every style that you use conforms to that list. Um, there are several backup plans in case you accidentally convert something. It's not gonna remove your text or delete anything. Um, and it'll give you a lot of opportunities to say like, hey, I found this non-SCML style, you should check it. But that's gonna be our, our big tool to keep referring to. 
um, the SAI, which we're going to talk about a little bit later today, actually. Uh, that's a Word tool we developed. It stands for the Scribe Add-in. Um, what that is, is it's almost like your kind of gateway to using the workflow in Word. It's, um, it's a new tool that gets defined for PC people. You'll see it in your little Word ribbon. Um, it includes ways to open and create new SCML documents. So loading our template, loading all of our styles into your template. Um, it includes the Word template. So we have kind of created a Word template that has all of our styles in it and certain renderings. Um, those renderings, like we talked about before, don't translate at all to how the book is going to look in the typesetting phase. It has a tool for you to identify where a style has been applied. So your heads are going to be bigger than your main text. A lot of different character styles, like italic and bold, are going to have a certain color applied to them so that you can see when text has that style applied to it. So um, that's another aspect of the SAI. It'll have your ability to con um, perform quality control checks, checking things like your note counts, checking things like your styles. Um, and it'll also include a slew of editorial tasks that I don't know anything about because I don't edit things that Elvis is going to go through. Um, and as he said, that's there for your convenience. If you find that it's helpful, you can use those editorial tools, but we're not trying to change the way people edit their books, uh, just the way they style their books. 